Welcome to Real Talk. This is your host, I am K Dub. This is a part of the Ain't No Half Stepping Show with Marcus J under the umbrella of Legacy Internet Radio. Real Talk is basically going to be a segment on the show where we talk with a number of brothers and sisters that are making things happen in our communities as well as in the country that you may not even know about or seldom hear about. Uh, today, the initial installment of Real Talk is with uh, a filmmaker, an entrepreneur. He's the casting director at Central Casting in Hollywood, California. He's my friend, my brother, Mr. Waleed Alim. What's going on, man? You. What up? <laughs> What's good, man? What's going on with you, bro? Ain't nothing. Just living this life out here. You know, just being, just being yeah, blessed. You, yeah, you out there, too, literally, literally. But look, man, I'm going to ask you a question, bro. You know, give, give, give me a little background as far as, like, what you do at, at, at Central Casting. What, what is your day-to-day, or, or what's your, what do you do out there? Okay, I'm a lead casting director, and uh, what that consists of is, uh, you know, we provide background talent, so extras with uh, mm-hmm. all the production that we work with. So uh, as far as movies, commercials, music videos, whatever you whatever you think of, that's you looking at on TV on the big screen, we provide talent for that. Um, so uh, let's see, that's like one of the best ways to break in as an extra. But uh, we're known as being an extra casting company, but from time to time we do get principal roles, speaking roles, but we're not known for that. But uh, since we're well-known, production companies usually come to us asking for whatever we can provide. Okay. All right. Look, how, what, what made you like? What made you fall into that industry, into the film industry, or basically just that in- industry in general? Well, pretty much, I found my my niche and my love for just production while I was in college, uh, you know, just taking, you know how you got to take all your regular mandatory classes and then yeah. you get your electives that you got to take? Yeah, I yeah. found myself in one other uh, doing, being interested in something else, but then I was just like, no, nah, I don't even like that. And it's like I was majoring in business at first, and right. business was just boring. Everybody, you know, you want to leave college, you want to make money, but – uh. It wasn't no passing anything for this. So, you know, when I took one of those classes, television video production, and mm-hmm. I found myself, like, excited going to class. Like, you know, you do the motions with these other classes. Like, oh, I got to get up, get out right. of bed, do this homework and stuff. And, right, 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 uh, right. But I found myself when I, yeah, when I took that one television video, video production class, I was just like, man, I can't wait to next week, get to class first. I'm I'm the first one in class and the last one leaving all the time. I'm like, oh, man, I got to keep this going. I like this. So that's how I found my niche. Like, okay. How I felt okay. passionate for it. Yeah. Okay. That's what's up, man. I mean, you know, I, I, I feel you and I understand. You know, we uh, – you shared some similar backgrounds and what have you, so I definitely understand. How long did it take you to get to the lead casting director? You know, you went out there and, and you know, you fell into it or what have you. So what? how long did it take you to get there? What was your path to get there? Uh, uh, it was a big journey. First of all, I didn't want to be a casting director. I just had knowledge and helped others do casting. So what happened is when I first got out to California, I was a production assistant on pretty much – so many commercial productions, music, music video productions, and movies. And, you know, you just work your way up the ladder. Like, you, you work with different uh, departments. So as a TA, you're pretty much the bottom of the ladder. So one day or one production, I'll be working with the hair and makeup department. I'll be the next day or next week or ne- another project, I'll be working with the lights and grip department. And then sometimes I'll work directly with the director. Like, I'll be the director's assistant, and I'll mm-hmm. be, you know, learning stuff from the director. And sometimes I got called in to help a friend of mine who's a friend of mine that was a mentor as a casting director. He used to help him with the casting. So I had knowledge in about, about everything that has to do with production. I moved around that way. So okay. then at one point in time, the music video production industry started having a decline, and I needed some steady work. So mm. I did go on this interview for as a casting director. I told him I didn't know casting like as being a cast director, but I can come in and learn, but I did have knowledge. And after I came in there, they realized I knew a lot more than some people that was already in there. And on the wow. spot, kind of like, kind of like it took about four months, five months for me to become uh, a casting director. And then from, from there on, 
just been history. history. <laughs> it's just been history. Yeah. It's just been blowing it out the water ever since then. Now look, yeah. man, you know, um we'll, let's just let's just keep it all the way real. Look, you being from Jersey, you know, you being a black man from New Jersey, you know, Irvington, New Jersey at that, and you go all the way out on the West Coast to and you're in this industry that isn't really kind to to a lot of people, one, being a black man, but also being Muslim. So, like, mm-hmm. what, what type of stuff, what type of obstacles did you have to deal with, you know, being a, being who you are in Hollywood? Well, first of all, you did, you touched one of them, like, Muslim. When you yeah. see my name on an application or you hear, or you hear me talk, they, most people think an uh, Arabic guy is going to walk in the office, a Middle Eastern guy is going to walk in the <laughs> office, especially from California. Like, California, yeah. compared to the East Coast, is heavily populated with like uh, people of Islam or Muslim in the East Coast, whether the uh, tri-state area, you know, Philly, Jersey, New York. But when I came to Cali, it was like not really that many people that like practice Islam that I ran into like in the industry at that. Okay. But anyway, anyway, like one of the biggest things is being a minority in the industry. Um, you're not going to have as many opportunities with the Caucasian like people that's in the industry in the Caucasian. Right. But it's, it, it, it's worse when you have to fight to get a job with somebody of that your own like you. community. Yeah, your own complexion, your own community. So that was one Man. thing I kind of right. struggled with, like, out here. I had to really, really work hard and show them that work will be any skin complexion or whatever, they're going to be like, you're going to respect me first, but then I'm still, right. in, in the meantime, you're still going to know I'm a, a powerful black male. Yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah, exactly. I'm going to represent that to the, to the end. I'm not going to be like, oh, no, 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 no. I already know that's a struggle anyway, so. Yo, so, so look, let me ask you this. Okay, so mm-hmm. you had to basically get out there and put yourself out there, want to be respected, uh, you know, as a black man, but also be respected in your particular industry. So mm-hmm. is it safe to say, and I've heard a lot of different things, you know, maybe you could clear, is it a whole lot of shucking and jiving out there in regards to, you know, just trying to get work for a black actor or actress? Is anybody in particular, like, there's so many people that come to California because of the land of opportunity as far as the industry. So there's a lot of naive people that will get taken advantage of, and I wasn't one of those people. <laughs> and I see it all the time. Like, I feel bad for some of these, uh, for example, models, uh, models that go out there that's like 19, 20, 21 years old. They're expecting them to lay on their back to get, to get, a, to get ahead. And yeah. I think most of the time, like, I come in contact with those people or, like, just even guys as well. It's just like, it's not about that, like, don't ever think you have to do that. You just got to grind it out, work hard. It's going to take some time. It's not going to come overnight. But I right. tell people all the time, if you keep working hard at what you want to do, eventually you'll be discovered, and, and you can take it from there, and you can go on from there. But it's so is sad it, how, how, how many nice people it is out here. Is it a lot of, like, you know, let's just be real right now, it's the, it's the time frame of instinct, you know, gratitude or whatever. You know, do you find, like, a lot of younger people that come out to Hollywood, you know, they look up to be that instant star? They looking to be on off the off the rip. Oh yeah, people, you know, instant gratification. People don't. I think like nowadays it's it's because we got so much media outlets and stuff. Uh, as far as like uh, YouTube, like you have all these YouTube stars, Instagram stars, Facebook stars. So everybody thinking like, oh, they could see it on social media, so they think automatically they could be, like, famous overnight because these other people did the same thing. But, no, you still got to put in that work. You still got to go on different work audition. You, right. got, you still got to go on audition. You still got to – because your talent is going to speak for itself. Like, people think you're going to get a role because <laughs> cause you did something. No, no, talent. Right. Still, <laughs> you still, we still got to see how you act on camera at the end of the day. So, so look, that leads me into another thing. Check it, man. I know um, on your social media recently you uh, put out a post that's called, uh, what is it, Ask Me Anything? And you basically oh, solicited yeah. uh, individuals to reach out to you. Why don't you, you know, tell me a little, about, a, bit, a little bit about that and how, how that came about and uh, what type of uh, questions that you get. All right. 
I, t- I promise, I made this promise. I said, when I get to a certain place, as far as knowing a lot of stuff in the industry, I said, I will share as much information as I can because when I first came out here, I don't know why everybody was had that, that crab in the barrel mentality, like, and don't want to put you on or don't want to help you. I was frustrated, like, yeah. asking people questions, and people just shut you down. So like, I'm like, yo, all I need to know is, like, need to know how you do this, how you do that. A lot of people be scared because they know, like, their position is, like, in oh, jeopardy, you know, so gotcha. everybody's like, oh, this guy, he's, he's already doing this, he's doing that, he's going to try to take my job. Most of yeah. the time, I don't want your job. I just need the knowledge for myself. So if somebody asks you to do something, like, let's say you're sick, and that's, that's how I got a lot of stuff. I did a lot of stuff. I know so many mm-hmm. things in production that somebody else will fall out of a job because they get another job or they're sick. Wally, can you step in and do this? Absolutely. They're like, do you know how to do it? I was like, I already know how to do it. So so that's That's similar to 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 playing ball, being ready. You know what I'm saying? You're the the eighth man. You know some games you might get in and you might not get in. And then that one game you get in and and, and have a monster game. Hey. (laughs) (laughs) You already know. (laughs) Hey, you already know. You know what I'm saying? So, yo, um, what are what, – what are, without, you know, I mean, not toot your – I don't want to toot your horn you know, toot your home too much or whatever, but, like, some of – can you name some of the people that you work with in the music and the film industry, uh, you know, in regards to casting or whatever or help put on? Absolutely. Uh, music videos, man, you name them, like – but I come from a different era. Not these new rappers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> talking yeah. about anybody that was high in 2000 to 2010. I pretty much worked on, like, the biggest music videos. Let's say uh, Busta Rhymes, uh, P. Diddy, Jay-Z, Kanye mm-hmm. West, all of the biggest, okay. all, all of the biggest names. Oh, I, mean, okay. I, I pretty much worked on their videos and stuff like that. Uh, as far okay. as actors, uh, if anybody want to do research, you can Google Central Casting <laughs> if you like. But yeah. we are like uh, we do like eighty nine percent of the industry. So any type of movie, any type of TV shows that's on TV, we do about eighty nine percent of the industry. So we work with pretty much everybody, everybody, <laughs> everybody. Yo, everybody. What, what, what would you say is the wildest, the most wildest stuff that you've seen or heard about out in Hollywood? Now, I mean, all of us pretty much have heard a lot of the crazy, uh, you know, the crazy parties. But what would you what what is some of the wildest stuff that you have seen or heard while you was out there? I'm gonna give that you was, now. I, two look, examples. Look, look, look. You can give us you can give us a scenario of somebody that may be known, but you don't have to share their name. Let's do it like that. If if that's if that fits. Okay, I, I, I'm gonna give you two stories that 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 come off the top of my head. Okay, I had to go to a production meeting. And it was a producer, a director, a rapper. I was directing his music video, and we had to go to this office, I guess, to the production company to, like, try to get some money from them or whatever to uh, produce his his music video. So okay. we go in the, I go in the office and sit down because we're making our pitch. And when you make your pitch, it's pretty much you got to give them a breakdown of what we're going to use for the video, what the video is about and everything. Mm-hmm. So while I did this producer, <laughs> it's normal out there. She pulled out some cocaine. <laughs> what? In the in the, in the meeting? Desk, in the meeting, while we're sitting there talking, like, casually, like, everybody smokes cigarettes or whatever. You want a cigarette? But it was like, <laughs> pulled out well, he pulled coke. out some, some coke. And I was just oh, like, shit. no. It was like... Yeah, have some. I was like, no, thank you. <laughs> nah, I'm good, baby. But uh, everybody I'm else, yeah, you know, everybody else was doing the analysis. Like, wow, this is Hollywood, and, it, and it's a normal thing. So that's and then them Hollywood hill parties. Yeah, they are what everybody pictured them to be. You know, yeah. a particular rapper. Uh, but this is what happens when you do music videos or whatever. If you do a music video from 9 a.m. to about 5 p.m., there's always going to be an after party, and, and rappers will be like, hey, we rented this house up in the Hollywood Hills. We're going to have a little bit of people come, come through. Y'all can come through. So the director will come through. Some yeah. of the cool people come through. Like, we're going to have a party in the hills and just chill because we had a hard day working. 
So a particular rapper had an after party at his house, went up there to the hills. I've never seen this. You walk in the front door, and there was a pool, a pool in the living room. <laughs> and, I mean, when I say, you just, can you imagine, you know, it was a top yeah. rapper. A lot of girls just walking around topless, naked. And, again, people walking around with uh you know, that, powder. That, <laughs> like, you want some powder? <laughs> like, no, I don't want some powder. Not baby powder. I'm just, powder. <laughs> I'm just here to have a good time, and that's it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude, you man. You're wild, crazy yo. parties. And I'm just witnessing, seeing a lot, but uh, I've had my fun. But I haven't well, had my right, shit. So, so, so look, <laughs> you talk about parties. You know, you shared with me. Uh, you've been to the Playboy Mansion, right? Oh, yeah. What's that all about? <sighs> Okay, uh, back in the let me see, and I got that through my uh, the casting company I worked for. We we did a particular episode when uh, what's the name? What's the name of the show? Uh, Vince and all them people that was in Hollywood. Uh, Entourage, Entourage, because okay. we we, we cast for Entourage, and they, for this particular episode it was a Playboy Mansion. And they was just like, "Well, we do want to go down there and help check people in." Oh, like, absolutely! Just to see what's happening before before they had built this film, and it still was like. A party atmosphere anyway, so it's just same thing. Uh, big pool, big grotto, the big the big pool that they have inside that everybody always go to parties at. And everything yeah. you expect, that's what it was. Naked women walking around, having fun, partying. I was just like, wow, wow. this is the Playboy man. <laughs> and I'm the Playboy man. And everybody wanted wow. to get in here. And I pretty much was just in there like, okay, <laughs> this is what it is. <laughs> Yo, but yo, think about it, man. How many people you know from 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 Jersey? You know what I'm saying? That from the hood. That's that's like, yo, I done been to the Playboy Mansion. You know, that's 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 something to tell right there. You know what I saying? know, man. You know me. I I'm I'm kind of humble. Unless somebody asks me about it, I won't tell them because I don't like being. I feel like that showboat when they're showing off, and I, that's never been me. I just be like, yeah, I've done I've done that before, but everybody else. Be like, wow. And I just like, wow. I just be like, oh, <laughs> you don't tell them. Uh, it's, just ass, right? it's just another day. It's just another day. So, look, man, um, what, would be, what would be your best advice to tell somebody that want to get on if they want to get on in that industry? You know, they come in, they come into L.A. or even, you know, wherever it is. I, I know that down in Atlanta, you know, that's starting to turn into a hotbed as far as people trying to get on. So if you had any advice to give to somebody that's trying to get on, what, what would it be? Uh, now is is way different now, and it's I don't want to say easier, but you got to get hot before you come into a casting now. Kind of if you want speaking roles and stuff. Um, now when I say that, there's a lot of people that have their own YouTube channels, they have their own yeah. Facebook, they have their own Instagram following. Mm-hmm. You do a little. I mean, people became famous off of Vine, and Vine was seven seconds. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Dudes, dudes you're right. and girls had seven seconds to tell you a story and got known. And I think, what's his name? King, King Bach, this dude, he killed it. He's now like a certified actor now, but all wow. he was doing was doing Vine, seven seconds, and posting one up probably twice a week and just getting a following. And I tell people now, we have so much, like, before to shoot with a video camera, you used to have to rent a camera or you can buy one and rent it for like five hundred dollars a day or now, you now you a, can, you a, can a do all that film. on your phone. A, a, exactly. People are shooting short comedy sketches, even short films, even music videos on their iPhones. And editing on their iPhone and putting the content out online and that's how people are being discovered now. I was like all you got to do is have a presence online because you, somebody's going to find you. Like, just scroll through Facebook. Uh, like I said Facebook, even YouTube. Like, you just be clicking on different things. Like, let me see. Oh, let me see this. Let me if see you catch the right clicks, person, boom. Eye, then, then boom. Yep, and they're going to be like, your, your, your contact information is in that little bio right there. Hey, this is how yeah. you can contact me. You're like, boom, I'm emailing you right there. Like, boom. Uh, can you come in for a reading? <laughs> or can you come hey. in for a casting? So that's Damn. one way right now, but then I tell people a lot of, uh, another way to, to get into the industry is like when I tell people come to Central Casting or in any extras casting, it's like starting from the bottom. When you're going as an extra, you're supposed to use that time to utilize and see what happens on set, what is expected, and how you can, you know, be seen 
and and uh, move up the ladder. Uh, you, mm-hmm. you you go you you be an extra one day, and uh, the director might look at you like I like that person. Look, he's the person I've been thinking about in my head because a lot of times they have a vision and they they're they like, all right, can you come in for a reading? We having a casting next week. Come to the casting. And you can kill it. You can kill it like that right there. Or you can even be talking to somebody in production at the time, and somebody just be like, wow. That person, you know, I remember that person for talking to that person. That's another way I got one of my jobs, too, talking to somebody, like, on break, on set, and they're, you know, they'll contact you because they remember the conversation they had with you and bring you in like that. So network. That's, awesome, That's what I would say, network. network. Hey, there it is. Well, hey, man, check it. We got about uh, 45 seconds left. My last question to you, if you had the opportunity to talk to Waleed at 18 years old, what would you tell him? Uh, have fun, <laughs> save money, and be a little bit more focused. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit more uh, but I don't, I, I don't regret anything, but I did lose focus of uh, other, other, other stuff that was happening in my personal life, but I uh, don't lose focus and just, you know, keep your eye on the prize. That's what's up, man. Well, yay, man. I, I, again, I appreciate you, you know what I'm saying, taking your time out. Talk to me. I appreciate you uh, letting me be honest, you know. <laughs> hey, man, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We share a bond, brother. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, hold the line real quick. And uh, for all of those, we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we'll come back with a little bit more of Ain't No Half Step with Marcus J. Peace. This is your man, K-Dub. You just listened to Real Talk.